James Elder is UNICEF's global spokesman. He joins us now via Skype from Geneva. Thank you, sir, for talking with us. Good morning. Thanks, Rosemary. So it looks like eight months of civil war in Ethiopia's uh, Tigray region will continue after rebel forces rejected a ceasefire declared by Ethiopia's government Monday. So what will this likely mean for civilians who face a humanitarian crisis of famine and disease right now? Well, we hope the ceasefire holds. I mean, that is that the last day or two were obviously very tense, but also very good news. But the idea that the ceasefire breaks, the idea that there are reprisals, the idea that there's not a political solution bodes terribly, terribly badly for, as you, as you clearly say, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of children. We know tens of thousands of kids are almost on death's door. I mean, I was in Tigray recently and I saw the work UNICEF is doing on those front lines, but I also saw the difficulty, the threats happening to humanitarian workers, the, the, the complexity about getting that support to those children, to those mothers who need it most. And that's getting worse and worse, as your reporter said, eight months of this. Now, if this ceasefire isn't taken, if all sides don't give the people of Tigray a moment, the children a moment to, to plant, to, to get into some safety, then, then we risk a, a, a continuing horror show for people that have just endured so much. And as you mentioned, you did recently visit the Tigray region. What, what else did you witness at that time? And what's the likely situation on the ground right now amid this communications blackout? I think right now, Rosemary, it's really tense. I mean, you, your reporter mentioned what happened at the UNICEF office where, where we had, you know, entry from Ethiopian troops that took uh, communication equipment. Why that's really important is because those staff, the staff I know in that office, they're the ones who are, you know, working out how to get clean water to a million people, working out next week how to get 700,000 measles vaccinations into children's arms. They need communication and they also need safety. At that very moment, they lost both those things. We saw last week the horrible, tragic death um, of three Doctors Without Borders, Medicine Sans Frontiers workers. So, you know, we need that safety. That's absolutely fundamental because right now, when you don't have that, what I saw was aid workers being threatened in the field. I saw people going beyond the call of duty to try and reach pregnant mums and children with emergency medical help um, and being stopped. So when we get access, organisations like UNICEF, World Food Programme, they know what to do. We have it ready, we have it ready to go. We can, we can stave off a famine, we can help people plant, we can maybe get a million kids back to school. But the ceasefire has to hold and everyone needs to start respecting international humanitarian law, which means respecting mums and dads and children and respecting that humanitarian workers need to be able to reach those people who need it most. Yeah, of course, the worry is that uh, Tigray rebels have rejected that ceasefire and they're vowing to fight on. But the U.S. has called for a U.N. Security Council meeting to discuss the crisis. That will happen on Friday. What are you expecting will come out of that meeting? And what do you want to see the U.S. and international community do about this crisis in the region? I think that, you know, the United Nations has been pretty clear in terms of the resolutions needed with regard to respecting international humanitarian law, you know, absolute accountability when it comes to sexual violence, which unfortunately has been rife against girls and mums and women in, in Tigray, and a ceasefire. Let's open up access. Again, the, the United Nations agencies, UNICEF and partners, we know what to do. We've been doing it, but when we have threats, when we have access blocked, when right now... We have no telecommunications, we have no roads open, no phone lines, no electricity. So Friday's meeting, hopefully we fix those things. We get access, we get comms, um, and we get a ceasefire that holds. That gives the people, remembering these people, Rosemary, they've done so much themselves. I mean, aid agencies are tireless. But the mums and dads I saw on the ground who would give their, you know, their last piece of food to someone walking past who'd lost their home or who'd carry a neighbour's child because they just couldn't walk any further... These people need some respite. For whatever reasons this ceasefire has happened, we need to take advantage of that. No reprisals, political solution. We must have learnt now that continued fighting is not in anyone's interest, particularly those children you mentioned, tens of thousands of them facing starvation um, right now in Tigray.
And of course, uh, the work you do, your organization and other groups do in the region, I mean, it is a heroic, it has to be said. But the problem is uh, for the, the international community, they feel tapped down in the middle of a pandemic. How confident are you that something will be done? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. And this is what the children of Tigray have faced. They had a climate crisis and these biblical swarms of locusts and then, of course, the COVID, which everyone in every corner of the globe has faced, and now, of course, conflict, the third one, utterly unnecessary. Um, I'm really confident. They, what I saw in terms of the people on the ground who really are tireless and selfless, and I mean all agencies here, I mean local people, non-government organisations, and, of course, my own colleagues at, at UNICEF, and they're ready. You know, we're ready to double the amount of water we supply. We're ready to to reach those to double tens of thousands of more children with that most severe acute form of malnutrition and save those lives. We're going to find a way to get more than a million kids back into school, Rosemary. We haven't seen a classroom for more than a year. That's such a psychological torment of a conflict without a classroom. But to do that again, and I hope Friday's meeting moves to this, and I hope all the forces in, in Ethiopia and uh, neighbouring countries, let, let's have a ceasefire. Let's give people a chance to, to plant, to start lives again. They've lost so much and they had quite a lot. They were living a pretty, a pretty good life. Let's give them that moment. Let's allow organisations like UNICEF get our telecommunications back, get back on the roads, open up the airwaves, proper humanitarian access, and we still can stave off what looked like a month ago, you know, a, a famine unlike we've seen in a decade. So there's an opportunity for the international community, for Ethiopia, to, to you know, address eight horrible, senseless months. But the coming days, as you rightly say, are really, really critical. Yeah, let's hope we see some progress. So James Elder, again, thank you for all the work that UNICEF does. We appreciate it and we appreciate you. Thank you.